Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, our listeners. Thank you to all of you, including Carmine Bailey, Vince Power, Chris Benito, and we've got four new patrons, Stefan, James, Andrew, and Tony. Yay. 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 On this episode of DTNS, what if meta Ray-Ban glasses could dox you? We'll go through what's real, what's not real, and what's possible going forward. Plus, it's deep fakes versus freedom of speech. And what happens when Google starts showing ads for its AI overview results? Because it's happening. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Well, we're all here. We have assembled. We have a lot of things to talk about. So I think without further ado, let's start with the quick hits. Google launched new features for Google Lens that lets users search for information within videos. The feature is live in Search Labs and can process up to 20 seconds of video along with voice input to deliver AI-generated overviews from the web. Lens now also includes more shopping capabilities for users like product reviews, pricing, and availability on both Android and iOS. On October 15th, YouTube is expanding shorts to allow videos up to three minutes long, designed to help creators share longer content. Not quite TikTok's 10-minute limit, but same idea. YouTube is also adding new tools like templates for recreating popular trends, better integration for remixing clips from across the platform, and improvement to shorts navigation like previewing comments and offering temporary options to reduce shorts in the feed. The ever ongoing saga, uh, legally, between WP Engine and WordPress co-founder and CEO Matt Mullenweg has yet another update. WP Engine accuses Mullenweg and his company Automatic of using control over the WordPress ecosystem to unfairly demand millions for a trademark license, while also harming WP Engine's business by excluding them from WordPress.org, with WP Engine now filing a federal lawsuit seeking relief from what it describes as damaging practices threatening both its company and the broader open source community. Spotify has a new feature called Offline Backup for Premium Users designed to automatically create a playlist of recently played tracks for offline listening. This isn't the same as manual downloads. This is more or less of a uh, playlist updates automatically based on what you're listening to and what's being cached. If you are on a flight, for example, it will have music for you if you lose your internet connectivity. As it did back in 2023, leading up to the big holiday season. Oh, remember 2023 holiday season seems like just yesterday. Amazon plans to hire 250,000 seasonal transportation and warehouse workers this year. The company expects e-commerce spending to outpace overall holiday sales in the final quarter of 2024. Two Harvard University students uh, created a bit of a a, 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 a conversation online. Uh, so they created a demo of how smart glasses and facial recognition technology can dox people's identities on the fly and in real time. Okay, so that sounds horrible, but here's what actually happened. The demo, dubbed iX-Ray, uses Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, which are available, to live stream video to Instagram, then uses a facial search engine called Pim Eyes that then uses AI to identify faces. Those photos, if they're taken, are then fed into a public database to find potential names, addresses, phone numbers, relatives, lots of stuff about you that is on the web. We all know that we're, you know, there is a lot of information about us, even if it's not entirely accurate on the web right now. That information, though, is then fed back through a mobile app. So the whole idea here is, uh, okay, so you're wearing glasses. Nobody knows that you're looking at them in some sort of way that uh, makes them feel uncomfortable, or maybe they do. But let's just say that you, you look at, I look at Justin, 
I am wearing glasses. Justin doesn't care. He's like, whatever, we're on the subway. Then I, um, you know, within a few minutes, know a lot of things about Justin, where he lives, who his mom is, you know, that kind of thing. How scared are we are, are about this? I'm not really scared about it. Uh, when, when I saw the, the demo, I thought it was, this is actually pretty cool tech. So we, we're beyond the point of when you, you, you have to worry about if your face is, if you put your face on Instagram, if you put your face on a YouTube video, if you put your face yeah, on a Facebook you're page, out there. it's out there. So the fact that it's out there, if there's technology, there's glasses that can actually look at your face and make very quick determination on who you are and give people information back. So when I saw the demo, um, the video is actually quite cool. I really thought it was a cool demo of just where ultimately we're going to be. And, you know, the, 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 the headline is a little bit alarming because it uses the word docs. That's not what these uh, students were doing. They, they basically were using it in a, in a good way. Um, and they weren't making people feel uncomfortable with it, but it was, you know, the, the video is really cool for anybody who wants to go take a look at that. We're in a very interesting phase culturally with privacy because the internet has made so many things available to us. We voluntarily post more information than we ever have. And yet we are more concerned with the idea that our personal information could be had by somebody. Uh, for those of you too young, there were there was a horrifying time in which your name and address was printed by the city you live in and thrown on everybody's doorstep once a year. <laughs> uh, it was called a phone book, and it was the way that in a pre-internet world, people were able to find each other. That being said, this is a great example of something that's been around for a very long time now becoming more controversial because the conflicts that they will bring up are just going to happen more often simply because technology has made it more readily available. There are already apps that you can buy and pay for where you can use the camera on your phone to take a picture of somebody and it will run it through those same publicly available databases and it will pull up based on your facial structure, who you are, and what your digital footprint is. 100%. I've seen this in action, right? Yeah, they're quick. I, they're fast yeah. with it. Well, yeah. and, I, and so I think, this I think, is just an example of, of, yeah. of, of the tech going a little bit faster because now you don't have to do this. You can just wear your glasses and, and maybe touch the side of your face. Well, that, and I think that's... That's really the conversation that, you know, people are having right now is, yes, this technology exists for sure. If you're a spy, you've been doing this for a long time, um, you know, or I don't know if you're stalking somebody, you know, this is you, know, you can you can be clandestine about a, a variety of things and, and do stuff that let's let's even just say if you're a journalist, if you were somebody who's trying any, to identify anything, yeah. somebody in a photo, right. like there, there are there are legitimate ways that people that all people sorts use of this things. Technology. Yeah, like you don't have to be a criminal to use technology no. like that. This is publicly yeah. available stuff. They, these are databases that are compiled and are sold Indeed. to anybody with the money. Indeed. Um, that said, I feel like, you know, the idea of, OK, well, are we all going to be, you know, a little weirded out if somebody wearing glasses looks at us directly for more than a couple of seconds? You know, a friend of mine this morning who wears glasses, he was like, well, I don't like this. And I'm like, nobody's going to think this of you. Um, but but uh, the more that this is possible and yeah and 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 really you know to to kind of like bring the fud down it's like most people are never going to have to care about this at all most people will not be affected by this at all well, but, the, but the capability of it does matter and people should be aware of it i, I think mean, people will uh, be affected i don't know that they'll be aware that it's happening to them here's the thing with the ray-ban metas they look like way ray-ban wayfair glasses they just look like sunglasses so you won't even know that someone might potentially be doing this to you when they're doing it to you and as long as you aren't creepy with how you use the information as they are doing in the video it you know it, I, I remember having a uh, conversation with someone who had face blindness and they actually had a assistant that the one of the main purposes of the assistants was whenever when they would see somebody in a meeting, this is a CEO of a company, they literally would say, who is that person? Remind me who it is because I can't see who they are. I can't. And mm -hmm. th this is one of the ways it's not nefarious. These glasses could actually help someone in that way, you know, for someone who suffers from something like face blindness.
Right, right. The, the, the whole, you know, the whole idea of this, and again, this is a research project. Um, you know, this is not something that's being sold right now. Although I, I would venture a guess that it is some, something like this is being sold on some sort of black market right now already. Um, I, you know, I, it doesn't mean that you can't, uh, be, you know, out in the world and, and, and not, you know, have somebody uh, going after you, but if they were going after you anyway, they were going after you anyway. I don't think that this really changes anything. It's like, nobody wants to be stalked, but if somebody is stalking you, they're, they're looking up your information. They're the, figuring the, the out other ways to do it. The part about this is already there. Like yeah. anything you're you're living in the world where the scariest part about this is here. The only difference is that it's happening on a camera next to your face and not a camera that somebody is taking with their phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's yet a more casual way for sometimes bad things to sometimes happen. So California's Governor Gavin Newsom recently signed AB 2839, which targets the distributors of deep fakes, specifically if their post resembles a political candidate and the poster knows it's a fake that may confuse voters. Newsom suggested that the law could be used to force Elon Musk, for example, to take down an AI deep fake of Vice President Kamala Harris that he reposted to X. The original poster of the deep fake, Christopher Coles, filed a lawsuit to block California's law as unconstitutional. And U.S. District Judge John Menendez agreed, ordering a preliminary injunction to temporarily block California's attorney general from enforcing the new law against Coles or anyone else. So, Justin, you know, how do you think the government and social media platforms are going to deal with these deep fakes? Because they keep getting better and better every day. And we, we don't want to trample on the First Amendment, but they're going to have to figure something out. And I don't know that this law was the way to go about it. Do they? <laughs> and by they, I mean the government need to figure out a way to do it. I am not so sure. I, I think that this is a platform problem to deal with. And I do believe that we are going to evolve the more that this kind of con uh, content becomes profligate. Again, this is similar to the first story that we had where this is a known problem that now is just going to be more in the forefront because technology has made the, the, the conflict point more frequent. It's not like there haven't been deceptive ways that you could represent a public figure in the past. And if you wanted to be very, very uh, uh, sneaky, you can do so in a way that looks very genuine. This is an issue because it's very easy to do video versions of stuff and like any tool, it's especially on the internet, it's going to be used to both persuade and amuse. So Gavin Newsom passes this law. It was never going to be enforced. And any enforcement of it was going to be extraordinarily controversial. Obviously, it doesn't fail the First Amendment test or doesn't pass the First Amendment test and it's held up immediately. It did succeed in making a lot of really funny deep fakes about Gavin Newsom which uh, were immediately intended to test the law itself by mocking him with a deep fake voice and video of him. But I would say the actual harm here is in on the platform side. Can you trust what you see on the platform? And does the platform believe that their reputation and therefore audience will decline if they do not police it? I don't know what America or the world wants Twitter to be. I look at it as I look at it as a very rapid but pretty unserious place. The stuff I like the most about Twitter is some pretty unserious content. Uh, so, do memes or attempts to to uh, even maliciously persuade me? Uh, does that matter really to me on Twitter? Not so much, but I can understand where people want to protect their public image. I just don't know if the government is going to be able to be the choke point on it. I think it's going to have to be the platforms. You know, on 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 X, formerly Twitter, uh, it more more than anywhere else. Although I'm sure uh, the conversation is happening in other places. I am seeing, and this is people that I follow. So uh, you know, your mileage may vary, but so many conversations now around like, look at this image clearly fake look at her hand clearly fake and it's it, you know it, it and then it's sort of like i don't know i mean is it fake probably fake um and there is there's this sort of big side channel now about oh you know let's take down you know the deep fakes and 
you know, are they all deep fake? It's, it's, this is, this is a big job. And this is why I hope that, uh, the companies that have committed to trying to make sure that, you know, if something has been altered rather than not, you know, the Adobe's of the world, for example, I, you know, I, I hope we can get to a point where we don't have to keep having this conversation. What's interesting is that one of the biggest platforms, when you think about Meta, so Instagram, Threads, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, they're trying to get away from news. They, they they just don't want to have to deal with this. It's like, you know, put all the stuff up here that you want. Section 230 is going to protect us because you're doing it. We just won't promote it. And if it's news, we're we're absolutely not going to promote it. Um, but there are, there are other places that want to still be the town square. So I, I just wonder, in order to be that, are you going to have to, as a platform, say, we're going to do everything we can to do every time an image, every time a video, every time audio is uploaded to our platform, we're going to scan it to see if there's any artifacts that we can find to determine whether or not this was AI generated or whether this is a real thing. And the problem with that becomes, well, things that are actually real, but were enhanced with AI will we'll start to get flagged. So. I, you know, I, I tend to agree with you, Justin. I think that this is not something for the government. It's going to be a thing for the platforms. But I honestly don't know what the answer Here, is. I don't, I don't know how they figure this stuff out. Here's what you're seeing the consensus is, is that they are demanding on every post for you to voluntarily label it as AI. And Good what I assume that. the reason why, though, the reason why they're doing it is if you are getting tagged or complained about as as AI and you have not voluntarily said that and therefore they can put a label on it, then they will have greater cause to nuke it immediately uh, because now you will have uh, uh, violated the the compact of uploading to that service. You have violated the TOS. You maliciously added something that they asked you or demanded that you tag. I, I you know, I think all moderation is always a work in progress. There's no way that you can prevent the internet from being an imperfect place. Uh, this is certainly another front in that war. And also it's hard because there's a lot of AI content that's harmless and it's funny. You know, there's a dude on TikTok that just does uh, uh, yacht rock versions of, uh, of right. like, heavy yeah. metal like songs the technology really is not inherently yeah. bad. It's... And sometimes political memes are really funny and you want to see Donald yeah. Trump read a context, Winnie the Pooh story context. or Kamala Harris, you know, do something that you wouldn't otherwise do. <laughs> she also might read a Winnie the Pooh story. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it was the thousand have... acre woods. Okay. <laughs> if you have thoughts on anything, Winnie the Pooh or anything else that we talk about on the show, do join our discord. Discord is a great place to hang out with like-minded folks or even not like-minded folks, you know, have some, have some discord, if you will. Um, you can do that by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTNS. <laughs> Google is going to start showing ads in AI overview results. So U.S. mobile users will see the ads for relevant queries with the sponsored label alongside with the summarized content that you are familiar with uh, if you use Google. Although the AI view, uh, overview has a bit of a reputation of providing dubious results in some cases, Google says AI overviews has led to a boost in Google search engagement overall. Google's also going to debut AI organized search results pages, separate product this week on mobile, also in the US. The tool provides AI aggregated content from around the web, but won't include AI overviews ad formats. All right, so so um, Justin, uh, I, I'm going to assume that you're very familiar with AI overviews. I don't know how much you trust yes. them, but, um, <laughs> the, you know, this is something that, you know, shows up the, at the top of Google searches more than ever. Google, Google had said in the past, oh, it only shows up sometimes. kind of shows up for me, like pretty much every time I search anything. Uh, what do you think about ads being part of this? It was necessary. Like there was, there was no world in which they couldn't find out an ad solution for for this here's the issue with google they've got a product problem with search they this is is their well here let me go one step before their entire company is based on adwords the way that adwords work the most effectively is by being on where they have a near monopoly and a, certainly brand awareness the likes of which nobody has ever seen and that is their search 
So they now are looking at for the first time, maybe in their company's history, new products that are fundamentally different from what they have that they are afraid could take market share. Principle among them, perplexity, AI, which is an AI assisted search that is entirely these kinds of uh, uh, AI reports that will come back to you based on search stuff. And chat GPT and open AI, which had search GPT that's in beta. We'll see exactly how serious they want to take it. Uh, Perplexity is a subscription service. We, we don't know what open AI is going to do, but Google is looking at that and saying, this isn't us getting uh, uh, something else wrong. This isn't us getting mail wrong. This isn't us getting some other uh, uh, element of our company wrong. If they begin to decline in search and therefore begin to decline in AdWords, this is existentially damaging to Google and Alphabet uh, uh, as, as a whole. So they got to update the product with AI uh, results. They've gotten into some controversy there. Obviously, we've talked a lot about where their Gemini model is. I believe it's getting better. They got a great uh, a product with Notebook LM, which we talked about last time. That being said, if they don't convert ads, if AI summaries don't convert ads like the old links did, that's also going to be a problem. Now, I don't think that they have much of a choice because again, you got to update the product, but also you got to make money on it. But this is, this is, I think, a dicier moment than people might think. So I, I've been yeah, playing around ahead. with the, uh, you know, just with doing searches in Google and, and getting the results back. And this is completely unscientific. But what I notice is that if I ask a question like earlier today, I wanted to know where is the power button on my TV? because I've only ever used a remote control, had no idea where the power button was. <laughs> the search result that came back was actually, it, it, it was the the AI generated result. It wasn't me going to Samsung's website. And that, that answer was just fine. And when I generally, you know, ask, you know, Google, how do I do something or where is something? And I get those AI results, those are really good. But I also noticed that if I'm looking for like information, I tend to actually get the the old style Google results where there's going to be sponsored ads and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think that G Google has no choice. They're, they're going to stick ads in this. They, they've just started doing it. We're going to see more of it. The question will be, uh, is the benefit that you get from doing search and getting AI results, is that good enough for, you know, for the general public to where they don't think about going and using something else? That's the first thing. Number two is, will they be bothered by the ads? And then number three is, will the ads actually generate the revenue that they used to so that the advertisers still continue to pay Google for the ability to show up when people search for stuff? Those, those three questions have to be answered. I don't think that Google has nailed any of them yet. They've, they've got time because it takes, it takes a minute for people's behavior to change. You're not going to just stop going to Google. Google is a, is a verb for, for goodness sake. People are going to still go to Google to do search. But if they, you know, if over time, if they just, if they lose a percent a quarter, uh, you know, for a couple of years, that's billions of dollars after a couple of years where you've allowed these other companies to catch up to you from a search standpoint. And th they're taking money away from you that you may never be able to recoup. So it, it, it is a dicey game that they're playing. They've, they've got to get this right. And, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting just to see how they fare in this, because I don't know that the answer is, is, is an easy one. It's something that we're going to have to spend some time with and, and ultimately get figured out. I think a lot of it also just really depends on what you're searching for. You know, it, it you know, if you're searching for, uh, you know, a way to make, you know, the perfect carrot cake, you, the AI results for Google might not actually be the results that you want because that's a subjective question kind of thing. However, if I need a certain ingredient, like, ah, oh, cinnamon, yeah, I need cinnamon, you know, and that's, you know, something that's sponsored that's part of that result, you know, that doesn't, like, hurt my quality of life. I'm okay with this. I get, I get why it's happening. Um, you know, to search for something that is a, a little bit more specific, I don't know, you know, if I say, yeah, you know, you know, what do I take for my cold that I have right now. And then it turns into 
uh, you know, uh, sponsored results for various things I might get at the CVS down on the mm. corner. You know, I might be like, mm, okay, well, you know, you know, you 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 tend to ignore certain things where you go, I know why they're doing this, and it's not necessarily the best thing for me. You know, so so then I I I feel like this this really is like the sponsored results of yesteryear of Google. They're just trying to make it work with 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 but the, with the new normal. Here's the other problem that they face is that Google also has a huge footprint in terms of display ads that go out on websites. And that is part of the reason why you've seen the, the fact that Google search, in my opinion, has degraded because they have put higher in their ranking sites that they also serve advertising on, oftentimes news sites. That's the reason why you have a very hard time finding things that are old if it shares any kind of keyword with a recent story because they are gonna prioritize those sites. The problem with AI overview is that it answers the question that you used to have to click through to a website for. And so in the, in the golden era of search ads, a sponsored link was still very valuable because at the very end of it, maybe it is exactly what you want, but you still gotta click a link. We are transitioning into a world where you increasingly have to do that less and less. So will ads that come below that seem superfluous or even more onerous than they did before? I think there's a very good chance that they do, but still, Google's got to figure this out because this is the golden goose. There is they nothing that comes close to it. They cannot miss on this. Um, well, uh, we always ask you for your feedback, and we got a really good one in the mailbag today. So Jeremy, formerly of Greenville, Illinois, you may have heard of this, hey. and now living in Middle Tennessee, has Boots on the Ground update for us on Samsung's partnership with Ashley Furniture. Jeremy says, I didn't see pricing displayed anywhere, and the salesperson was busy doing a demo at the time, but he took this video for us anyway. It's dinner time. Enjoy. creative I don't know I kind of love it I there's love a Ashley smart furniture. home there's an Ashley furniture around the corner from the house really we'll go check it out this weekend yeah literally it's probably not a mile and a half from where I live so I'm gonna go check I, it out I I it feels a little dystopian to me. I can just imagine if you're going to tell a story of a dystopian world that you have that exact system happen with that exact voice and that exact oh, music. If you're, if do you're you listening not to have this, a smart bulb in your hold house, on, hold Justin? On, hold on. If you're seeing, if you're not seeing the video, there's gorgeous pictures of of uh, uh, steaks being sizzled and and uh, seafood being served. Yeah. Then you just smash cut to the person who's actually eating, and it's like a television dinner that they just poked holes in and microwaved well, for, I mean, for two minutes. What's on the TV has nothing to do with. I mean, you anything could be on the TV. The whole idea was, you know, you've got you've got your your tablet, and you say like it's dinner time. This is our dinner scenario, and then mm -hmm. it's creative time. Ooh, the lights are different. Home automation, folks will like this a lot. It's more than what they already this. like. Uh, yeah. Being able to walk into a room, tell the room what you want, and the room just modifies itself to just your goes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. Just well, go, as Kendra well, said. We want, we want to thank Jeremy for, for taking that video and sending it in to us. And we also want to thank you, Justin Robert Young. Tell hey. us one of the many places where people can find you talking into a microphone in front of a camera. Oh, baby, <laughs> it's October and it's full of surprises on politics, politics, politics. going to be a huge week on the show uh, starting on Monday. So head on over there. If you're not following it, then you don't know what the hey is happening as we are less than a month away from Election Day. Patrons, stick around for our extended show, Good Day Internet. What are the most AI-friendly places in the U.S.? You might have opinions. You might be surprised. If you're not in the U.S., 
What do you think is the number one global spot? We'll kick it all around with our live audience. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com forward slash live. We'll be back tomorrow discussing how tech companies are planning to power all these new data centers with Molly Wood and Lynn Peralta. Talk to them. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>